Hey, y'all. Thank y'all for being here. So we're going to be discussing cats today. And a lot of you guys have cats or have had a cat before. So uh, I thought you would find, you know, this information very interesting. So um, we're going to start off by saying hi to everybody and allowing you guys to come into the chat. Um, I do have some cute little cat tarot cards that I showed you guys before. These are so cute. Um, and the thing about cats is that they were the only animal to domesticate themselves, which means the only animal to um, come to humans as a pet or a companion on their own without having to be trained or caught or uh, anything like that. They came of their own free will to humans. And cats date back to uh, way before ancient Kemet, ancient Egypt. Um, they found people, uh, fossils of humans and cats, you know, together um, since before, you know, thousands of years before ancient Kemet. So cats have been a part of human life for a very, very long time. And they are um, all associated or you can all draw their origin back to the African um, cat. It's like a wild cat in Africa. And then they were domesticated and, you know, um, on their own and they started to mix and mingle with other species of cats. And that's how you get, um, you know, the modern day domestic cat. So you also have um, like special breed cats as well um, that are very expensive as well. But the regular, you know, short hair feline is, you know, what most people are used to. So witches back in the day, Egyptians, ancient Kemets, uh, back in the day, they used cats. They basically worshiped cats in a way by making one of, one of their goddesses, you know, Bast, a cat, a black cat. Um, she was different colors when she was different aspects of herself. And you have Sekhmet. So these cat energies or these cat goddesses are very powerful because they are, cats are interdimensional creatures. Okay, they can astral travel, they can see what the human eye cannot see. Um, they can see energies, they can see people's auras, they can sense when something is wrong, they can sense when you're sick, they can heal you um, with their positive, uh, you know, energy that they have. Um, scientifically, cats have a positive charge. So uh, it will get rid of and dispel all negative energies, even uh, if you're sick or not feeling well. Usually if you uh, have a cat or pet a cat or let a cat sit on top of you, you'll feel a lot, lot better, right? So they kind of draw out or neutralize that negative energy in your environment and in your body and your home. So that's why I think a lot of people should go adopt cats, you know, Um so uh, cats are used a lot in magic and in the occult because they allow us to see more, allow us to astral travel easier, allow us more insight and um, awareness of our surroundings that we may not be able to pick up on or sense. So, for example, you know, you ever seen a cat looking at something and you don't see anything and it's like invisible, you don't see anything, but the cat is like following something around? Well, the cat sees what that is. Okay. And um, back in the old days, cats would come to um, the house and um, they started to meow to sound like an infant or a baby because cats normally never meowed. They had like a roar or a little growl, but they domesticated themselves and learned to sound like a baby in order to get fed by humans. 
So um, a cat would come to someone's house and meow. And if they had milk or some food, they would feed the cat. And a lot of these um, ladies who, you know, fed these cats were feeding them their breast milk. Okay. So a lot of these women who were nursing or had, you know, babies of their own, the cat would smell the milk and find the house. And the cat would beg for, you know, some milk too, you know, you know imitating the sound of the child. So the, you know, the woman would feed the cat some of her milk, which would then link them genetic, like DNA wise. And so this is where a lot of women started getting these, you know, very uh, interesting points of views, in-depth knowledge, um, astral travels, um, you know, uh, seeing spirits and energies and being able to communicate with certain things because they were linked with a cat. Unknowingly, they fed their DNA and their breast milk, which also includes blood, in you know, they linked it with a multi interdimensional creature. And so now um, on a spiritual level, they're linked. Okay. So <laughs> that's where you get like this certain, you know, um, increase in knowledge within women. Okay. So think about this, a cat, a wild cat could go throughout the woods and they would know what herbs or what plants or what things that were poisonous and what were not, even though they're mostly carnivorous, cats still chew on herbs, catnips and stuff like that. And so, you know, having a natural link to an animal that is highly, you know, um, intelligent as well as connected to other realms, what make these women see a lot more. And so they started to you know, give help to other women or talk to other women and give them insight. And, you know, uh, they would have the allureness and enchant enchantments of a cat, you know, and so they would also be able to seduce much easier because as we know, cats are very, you know, slick and, you know, very catty and they know how to draw you in, you know. So a lot of these ladies were getting you know, so much more in life because they were now merged with these cats. And <laughs> then that's when people started calling them witches and stuff like that. So, but in the ancient days, they would use these cats, you know, a lot of people use these cats or priests and priestesses would use these cats to get insight into, you know, what was going on and how to make things better. And, you know, different knowledge, they could go and astral travel easier when they're connected to a cat and get more information from other realms, whether it be from the realm of the dead, the realm of, you know, um, ancient primordial deities and all this kind of stuff. So they knew how to use these cats. That's why they were sacred. And even if you killed a cat in ancient Egypt, you know, it was a crime, a, you know, punishable crime. So um, when you see cats, you also uh, need to understand that they are positively charged with protons. And so um, that's why they get rid of negative energies and also easier to create a plasma or frequency to create astral travel when, you, uh, when you're sleeping. So if you have a cat and it's going to increase your aura, it's going to take a lot of the negative aspects off, off of you and allow your aura or your frequency to grow larger, therefore making it easier for you to astral travel. So if you're having trouble astral traveling, get you a cat or two. Okay. <laughs> a cat or two, yes. And someone says, please adopt black cats. I do. Yeah, black cats have the most... Um, um, I guess the highest frequency of all the cats because, you know, the color holds all that energy as well. So if you get a black cat, you're most likely to astral travel um, very easy. <laughs> so um, keep that in mind as well. If y'all remember um, like cats 
definitely are a major part of, you know, occult knowledge and science and things like that, because they allow us eyes and a frequency that, you know, is more, you know, intense. So get, um, get used to that feeling. And like, I've noticed, cause I've had cats most of my life. There was only a brief period of time where I didn't have a cat, but you know, when my kids got old enough, I got another cat, you know, and it's, it's so much of a difference living in a house with cats versus not living in, you know, not living with cats. Um, you have so much more insight and depth to your spiritual practices, your spiritual knowledge, so on and so forth. You dream a lot better. It's just, it's just something that you're going to notice. Okay. Um, so yeah, I see y'all have some cats in there. <laughs> so if you are not, if you're not breastfeeding and you want to lake yourself with a cat, feed the cat some of your blood. You can like prick your finger, you can put the blood on the food of the cat, put it in the water or let, you know, whatever. If you want to link your cat to you even, you know, stronger, a lot of witches do that. And then you have a more psychic connection as well. So um, you can also do that if you have cats. They're very much divine and they don't mind being alone. Cats are mostly loners. Um, they can be alone when they want to with no problems. So if you have a problem with codependency, you know, um, a cat, def a cat's energy can definitely help you out with that. <laughs> All right. Uh oh, thanks for being a member, Caesar. So, um, <laughs> yeah, we need cats, literally. I mean, think about it. The only animal to come and domesticate themselves to you by their own free will. That's a very interesting, right? And so um, I know a lot of people ask me about how do you protect yourself against energies or spirits or that get a cat link yourself to a cat or get a cat. Um, nothing can really bother you or enter your home without a cat finding that energy and dispelling it, you know? So um, <laughs> get you a cat, baby. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Do I believe in heaven or hell? I believe we create heaven and hell in our own daily lives. Okay. If that's what you want to create, I, I create, you know, the life that I want to live. So I don't, I don't have a religious belief, especially one that links to heaven or hell. Um, one thing about cats is they know how to protect. Exactly. Uh oh, Caesar, thank you. Spark sprinkle. Thank you for the donation. I really appreciate it. Um, okay. And another thing great about cats is that, you know, back in the old days, they used to keep mice insects, all that kind of stuff out of the house. So they would catch varmints. They would also catch spirits, ghosts, energies, um, you know, astral beings that were not supposed to be there that were negative. So uh, I was watching Dr. Phil yesterday. I wasn't really watching it on purpose. I was at a restaurant and they were playing it on the TV. And so there was this lady who kept telling Dr. Phil that she was constantly being harassed and, you know, uh, bothered and attacked by these astral or spiritual entities. And she said, basically, they were pimping her out in the astral plane and like for her energy, right? <laughs> and she wanted Dr. Phil to help her figure out how to get these in entities to leave her alone or to stop them or whatever. And basically, all she needed was a cat. Thank you. Thank you, Caesar. Sprinkle, sprinkle. All she needed was a cat. That's all she needed was a cat. Okay. But a lot of times people don't realize this or to link herself with a cat. A lot of times people don't realize this because like they don't think about, you know, an animal that they deem lesser than them as a human could be so, so powerful if you are linked to them. So 
in my opinion, if you are linked to a cat, you have the same abilities as a cat in your astral travels, in your dreams, and in your waking life. So you could, you know, uh, go in and out of the dimensions or the astral world if you are linked DNA wise with a cat. Okay. So make sure if you are, yeah, a familiar, exactly. So understand that. And you know how, if y'all watch Sabrina, the teenage witch, or, you know, uh, the chilling tales of Sabrina, the newer one that's on Netflix, um, those witches were like, like, yeah, your familiar will find you. Your familiar will find you. And cats were the only animals to domesticate themselves by finding humans and domesticating themselves on their own free will. So perfect companion if you are into spiritual practices, especially having to do with the astral realm, spiritual realm, getting insight into what is, you know, going on beyond the veil, because cats can definitely see beyond the veil. Um, so you said your familiar is a reptile. And you know, that's so interesting because I feel like cats are definitely a hybrid or there's some type of DNA from snakes, which is a reptile. In, in the cat because they have the fangs of a snake and they hiss just like a snake. Um, you have the big cats like leopards and lions, they only roar and they don't hiss, you know, and their eyes are very different from these, you know, domesticated house cats. Their eyes are less, they're more like mammalian and a cat's eyes are more like snake eyes. So, um, I would say that a cat is also probably a hybrid or a merge that has a, um, a lot of reptile DNA as well. So, um, you know, that could also work. <laughs> yeah, all cats are divine, but I'm just saying if you want one with the highest frequency, get the black cat because their fur is um, absorbing more energies Let's say, let, let's say you have an issue with, you know, spiritual energies that you don't feel comfortable around, okay? A black cat will absorb those much faster and easier because the color of their uh, fur is naturally going to attract that energy and dispel it, okay? So um, that's why you always see witches with black cats and they're able to fly or astral travel and... Um, they have like these, the insight into nature because they're part of nature because, you know, um, and then you have their familiar, which is a black cat. And they used to think that black cats used to spy on people and go back and tell witches and that they were linked to the devil and stuff like that. But that's just not true. A cat can spy on you without even being in the, in, in the presence, you know, physically because they can astral travel. So you would have witches making spells or commanding their cat to astral travel, or they, if they link themselves, they could literally astral travel in the form of their cat spiritual, you know, animal to, to, you know, look at whatever they need to look at or get information on whatever they need to get information on. So that's why a lot of people deemed women who took care of cats, witches, because back in, you know, back in those days, a lot of people did not keep cats as pets. They were more, you know, to chase varmint out of the barns or, you know, not to be, you know, taken into the home. Okay. Um, you say cats have x-ray vision too. Night vision, x-ray vision, other realm vision. Uh, okay. So... If you get a black cat, don't try to get, they don't, they don't give them out around Halloween. So you need to get one a couple months before October or you like in the summertime or in the spring is the perfect time, I mean, even the winter to get black cats because they, a lot of animal shelters don't, you know, uh, adopt them out because they think people are going to sacrifice them or something like that. I don't know. Um, they do. And uh, let's go into why people sacrificed black cats. A lot of people would catch a cat that may have belonged to someone who was linked to it. And to cut that link or to sever that link, they would a lot of times 
kill that cat or if they were, um, you know, something like that, or as a sacrifice, uh, a multi-dimensional sacrifice. So I don't recommend animal sacrifice, but I think a lot of people were curious as to why they were choosing cats or black cats or whatever. Um, and usually it has to do with a more negative side of the occult or the more evil side of the occult, which would represent you know, uh, killing an animal that can dispel negative or evil energies, you know. So that's what that represented. And, you know, if you have cats, you know that they're very easy to communicate with. Uh, sometimes their meows are more like talking. And I guess the longer you have one, the more you understand what they want, when they want it, you know, blah, 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 blah. Um, Cats are also good warning systems. Uh, if they feel a presence or an energy near, they will most likely uh, like jump on top of you or try to get your attention or get you to pet them. If you know um, they they feel like uh, you need protection of some sort, they will come to you. Um, and sometimes, if you are linked to a cat, they can literally kind of. Uh, have a psychic connection with you and kind of read your mind a little bit. So you can literally call your cat to you without even saying their name. Just think about them and they will literally just come to you. So, but you have to have that bond. You have to form that bond, you know, spend time with your cat, pet your cat. Uh, if you link yourself to your cat, great. If, you know, some people don't believe in that, but if you want to, you definitely can. And if you have any hangups about linking yourself to a cat, because you're afraid of astral travel and all that kind of stuff. Totally understandable. Um, it's almost like being linked to your child because y'all have shared the same blood and the same body at one point and y'all share the same DNA. So just think of it, if you have a maternal link to your, ch your children, it's almost the same thing, except now you have an, uh, a, a link to a multi-dimensional, you know, creature. <laughs> So it's kind of, it's kind of cool. It's kind of cool. Okay. And if you're going to link yourself with any animal, I definitely suggest a cat. You know how they always say, well, if you could be any animal in the, in the world, which one would you be? <laughs> okay. Bass is the protector of the home. So it makes sense. Yes. They knew that long ago. Um, and also getting uh, lots of, you know, clarity on the other side or the astral realm can help you in this realm as well. <laughs> um, no, um, well, oh, back in the day, like I said, witches used to um, link themselves to cats with their breast milk or blood. So, um and it was probably totally by accident with the breast milk because the cat came out of the woods begging for food, sounding like a baby themselves, meowing. And if the woman was nursing, you know, the cat would smell that and be attracted to come and get some milk. And so by giving the cat breast milk, the woman would automatically link herself to that cat with her DNA. So if you're not breastfeeding, then, you know, prick your finger, get the cat some blood. Same thing. Um, now, a lot of people say, oh, that's weird. That's gross. But it's the same type of um, it's the same type of bond you hold with your child. So just think of it like that. Some people think of their animals as their children or, you know, whatever. Because you literally have to go through the process of adopting a cat. You have to go through the adoption process, make sure it is healthy. And da -da -da -da. So it's almost like adopting a child. Um. What do you think about saying curiosity killed the cat? Cats are very curious creatures and I think so are humans. And I don't feel like, I don't like that saying because people who aren't curious, they don't seek knowledge and people that don't seek knowledge never learn. So um, I feel like, I think people who seek knowledge understand that what you're gaining is definitely worth you know, the issue, the troubles, because, um, <laughs> and then they also say cats have nine lives. So 
If they got if they got killed, they coming right back. Sprinkle, sprinkle. <laughs> you know. There you go. Did I watch Sailor Moon? No. I never watched that. I think I think my daughter watches some 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 of it. Um. But yeah. You say blood ritual for bonding. Well, yeah. Would black dogs be just as powerful as black cats? E well, I have a thing about dogs. I feel like dogs also represent, you know, a different aspect of energy. I think they're very loyal companions, and but I don't feel like they're on the same level as a cat. You know what I'm saying? Like, as far as the astral realm, I think they're more for the physical realm, protections for the physical realm and things like that. Um, I think dogs can sense death when it's near because they are associated with Anubis, which is you know, like a dog or some type of uh, jackal headed, you know, from the ancient Kemetic Pantheon. So I would definitely say dogs are more for this realm than the astral realm. Okay. Yeah. So they're the uh, physical protectors. So if you have a dog and a cat, then you have a good balance, you know. <laughs> what about owls? You have an, a pet owl? We have owls all around where I live and you can hear them at night. And if you like hoot and sound like an owl, they'll hoot back. <laughs> Y'all can talk together, I guess. Um, so, you know, I hear them all the time. Right. You said, uh, okay, Aria, you say you're a, um, divine, but you are, you are divine, but you are a transgender woman. You have a hard time managing hate or negativity. How can I use being transgender to my advantage? How are transgender people spiritually different? Um, I feel like, okay, so I would say you can use it to your um, advantage by accepting yourself and not having, well, of course, you probably already accept yourself and you have no shame. But if people hate on you, then I would definitely say, you know what? I'm sorry you feel that way, but I'm going to be who I am no matter what you think, period. If you think about it, um, we are all born or in our mother's womb and we start off with a more feminine body at first and then you know we get our sex but if mentally if you don't feel like you are the sex that your body you know you don't feel the gender that you you know were given at birth then we are able to create whatever we choose to be you know what i'm saying so I don't think it matters. I think most people are associating it too close to the physical form. And when you associate something so close to the physical form, it's because your mind is in a lower state. So if they feel like, okay, well, I don't like you being transgender because it looks like you're tricking people. But if you're open and honest about being trans, then you're really not tricking anyone. And I think most people feel like, um, when you're trans, you're trying to fool people. And I think that's where most of the hate comes in. I, I think literally that's all it is. So I, I know that a lot of people who are trans who are, you know, not trying to fool anyone and lead with the fact that they are trans and they're proud of who they are. I think they get a little bit less hate. They probably still get some because people have to transition out of that mindset of, you know, um, having no power to choose how you want to represent yourself, you know. And if you are divine, you definitely have the power to know how to represent yourself. And you have the choice on how to represent yourself, you know. So, I mean, there are transracials out there representing themselves as a whole nother race. <laughs> And I feel like it's okay to do what you want. And especially in this time and era, it's okay to do what you want. And I just live in your, you know, live in your divinity. 
it doesn't matter, but everyone is not going to accept you and you should accept that. Exactly. There are people that are perfectly, you know, assigned to their gender and accept their gender, but then some people don't accept their race or their culture. So, you know, a lot of people still deal with that on top of, you know, gender. So I would say just stop caring and be who you are. I wouldn't care. <laughs> Um, all right, where are we? let me see some more questions. So you said that's mental illness. I don't think it's a mental illness. <laughs> I, I really don't feel like being trans is a mental illness. I think, um, it's no, it's no more mental than feeling like men should rule over women. <laughs> it's no more mental than saying God is a man. It's no more mental than that. So, you know, perhaps we need to def redefine what mental illness is. <laughs> um, I don't think it's a mental illness at all I think it's an expression of the divine feminine coming through mm -hmm. do I believe in reincarnation um, if you have babies I mean we literally reincarnate ourselves when we decide to have children that we keep our DNA chain going, you know? Uh, you said transgender people been around for, since forever. Exactly. If you look back into, you know, to ancient times, you know, especially if you get a book with, um, you know, ancient Egyptian uh, pictures and stuff, you'll see that a lot of the men and the women, you know, they looked very much alike. They, they all wore makeup, headdress, clothing. Um, the women dressed a little bit different, but the men weren't too, you know, too much different than the women were dressed. Okay. Uh oh, you love cats and you grew up with them. House pets, multiple occasions while asleep. I felt like cats were walking in my bed. But I knew any cat wasn't around. What does that mean? That cats astral travel. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Yeah, because cats can definitely also astral travel. And so you might have felt their astral body. Mm -hmm. um, yep. You said if you go according to alchemy, there was divine androgyny. Mm -hmm. So, you know. I feel like, yeah, if you go with alchemy, definitely androgyny exists. So there you go. Uh, and I do feel like cats are also a great example of, you know, energies that, you know, here's my thing. Animals, especially cats, dogs, or whatever, they, they accept all humans. They don't have preferences. They don't care if you're trans, gay, straight, black, white, Asian, whatever. They're just going to feel your energy. You know what I'm saying? So I think we can learn a lot from animals um, to be more accepting of others, other uh, people. Because if animals can, if, especially cats, can come to humans and free, free willingly domesticate themselves upon them, and accept them and love them in any shape, color, or form. I think we can learn a lot from animals. You know, um, an animal that can see into different realms and different dimensions and know way more than we do may feel like we're mentally ill. <laughs> or maybe that's why they act more divine than us and like they're better than us, especially cats. So I don't feel like we should be labeling people mentally ill. Um, and a lot of people uh, are born how they were born. Some people are born different. That's it. Um, 
And some people choose to become trans. Maybe they weren't born thinking that, but maybe they were inspired and want to be reinvent themselves. You know, a lot of people want to just reinvent themselves. So whatever it is, who cares? As long as you're happy and you don't hurt anybody, I don't see an issue with it. Um, so cats are more, um, you know, more likely to be found, um, you know, in witches' houses or, you know, you ever heard of a cat lady? Um, <laughs> women are very drawn to cats because they remind them of children because of the sound and the pitch of their meow is literally the same pitch of a baby crying. Did you know that? Uh, even some women who have already had kids, um, if their breast milk is dried up and they're no longer nursing, when a cat starts meowing at that frequency, a woman's body can literally start producing milk again from a cat's meow. Did you know that? <laughs> because they know how to match the frequency to get the woman to nurse and, and draw out more milk. Um, so that's kind of cool, right? Um, you said, do cats guard your door at night for bad omens or energies? Even if you don't have, like, if you don't have cats, um, you can also, to represent a cat, you can get a cat statue, a, like a bast statue from Egypt. Um, like, they sell them online, but you can get a bast statue. You can um, put an altar up for bast to get the energies, because like I said, cats astral travel. So if you don't have a cat, then you can still get the cat energy until you can get one, then it's just going to become stronger. You know what I'm saying? So I definitely feel like um, you can incorporate cat statues and cat energies until you find one. Mm -hmm. They even sell cat fur online. A lot of these like hoodoo shops and magic, you know, uh, occult shops and things like that sell cat hair, cat nails and little bags. I know some people sell their own cat's hair online to witches and stuff. <laughs> so um, that's another thing. Do you have a coven? Can I please show? No, I work alone, <laughs> just like a cat. You know, cats are loners by nature. They don't need a pack. They don't need a coven. This is one, one is good. They'll tolerate other cats and stuff like that, but they're perfectly fine alone. <laughs> okay. And they can also communicate with the other side. Like, so a lot of people think cats can see the dead. They can see ghosts or whatever, whatever. Um, so any energy or spirits, cats can definitely pick up on. Um, so... If, if you're the type of person to, you know, do seances or try to contact the dead or, you know, summon some, you know, the dead or do a Ouija board or something like that. If you have a black cat around, you're going to be better off with, you know, with allowing a lot of bad energies to come through. They're going to see the cat and be afraid. <laughs> so... You know, if you if you deal with things like that, definitely have you a cat. I remember before we got our cat, we used to do the Ouija board and all that kind of stuff in my office. Upstairs, we used to, you know, do the ghost app, try to communicate with spirits and stuff like that. And I'll tell you, my lights in that office kept cutting off. And even the breaker outside couldn't turn it back on. We had to we had to eventually switch it out a couple of times. So there was something in there draining that every time. And so when we finally got our cat, you know, and oh, I forgot to also add that, you know, there were some energies around the house and they were, you know, um, uh, they were seen, you know, by, you know, like the children. So a lot of, and the cats. And so, after the cats, after we got the cats, you know, they, they disappeared and they were, they weren't here anymore. So the cats really literally get rid of any unwanted 
negative energies in the house. Um, so if you haven't like a problem with these energies or whatever coming through, if you've been playing with stuff, get you a cat and, you know, it will help get rid of them. Okay. Uh-huh. All right. Good. What'd you say? That's good to know. I don't use the Ouija board, but I'd use the pendulum board. Okay. Well, whatever you're using, if you're calling through spirits, um, cats will definitely be able to get rid of the negative ones. Um, mm -hmm. So what does it say about you if you're definitely afraid of cats? <laughs> A lot of people have been trained to be afraid of cats. They don't know why. It, it, I don't know why a lot of people are afraid of cats. Um, perhaps it's in your, you know, family history to be afraid of cats. It's very weird <laughs> to me that people are afraid of cats. Um, maybe are you afraid of a kitten? Like maybe start off with a small, like a newborn kitten, and your fear of cats will probably be alleviated if you raise one from a kitten. Um, I think people just see those claws and teeth and get afraid or they believe superstitions, but I don't think people should be afraid of cats. Uh oh, witchy, thank you for the super chat, Sprinkle Sprinkle, I appreciate you. <laughs> okay, a lot of myths you were told that they take baby's breaths away and give your children asthma. Um, I don't believe that's true, but let me tell you a little bit of something about that. Back in the old days, a lot of kids, would, especially in like the Victorian era and prior to that, a lot of babies would not make it um, because rats ran rampant and would get in the crib of these babies and chew off their noses and chew on their faces because they would smell the milk. And so they would come sniffing around and cats actually saved a lot of babies, you know, so they would save a lot of babies. Um, and sometimes they will be protecting the babies from the negative energies trying to enter into the babies. Cause you know, a baby doesn't have a, it's complete, you know, um, spirit until they're a little bit older because the spirits are still deciding what, if they want to be, uh, reincarnated into, you know, back into life. And so a lot of times these cats are trying to suck the bad energies out that got in. And I, I know a lot of people think that's crazy, but if you really sit and think about it, if you had an ancestor that wasn't so good and they wanted to be reborn through your DNA because they're linked to you um, and they have this new baby here and all of a sudden, you know, their energy got into the child, the cat might say, oh, no, you're not. So they may have been mistaken to be trying to steal a, a child's breath or whatever, whatever. But I also feel as if they could have been protecting the child from what had already entered. So think about it. It could go either way. If you want to avoid all of that together, then sleep with your own child. Keep them in the bedroom with you. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, mm -hmm. people demonize what they don't understand. Yeah. You've seen baby cams where evil spirits always try to enter. Yeah. Newborns, parents always catch them too on the cameras. Exactly. So the cats be trying to help them, but they were given a bad rap. <laughs> uh. You no longer believe that cats do that, yeah. Um, cats, if you watch, you know, cat videos and with babies, you'll see that a lot of cats sleep in the cribs with babies or neck, right next to the crib because they are they really want to protect it. They're not trying to eat it or you know kill it, but they're really trying to protect those babies. <laughs> okay. 
You said evil spirits aren't afraid of dogs, but they are afraid of cats. Yeah, because cats can attack them in the astral realm. And they can dispel their energy. You know how like whenever you see a cat and their fur stands on end, their positive protons are now like reaching out further into, you know, their into the surrounding area. And so they're literally shooting out positive eye, like positive protons to dispel negative energies. Also, they do that to look bigger if they do have like physical prey after them or if they see a physical threat, they'll puff up really large to look bigger to scare off anything. But at the same time, they're dispelling those, you know, protons to, you know, neutralize negative energies. So also know that because like they're multidimensional creatures. So what they do physically also affects the spiritual and the astral. Um, you said you want to be a cat? And a lot of people are linked to cats. Now, I, I almost put a video out a while ago, but I didn't do it. I don't know why. I think I might have. I don't remember. But at one time, a lot of celebrities were repping cat energy. And the links were uncanny. And a lot of, um, a lot of people were, you know, representing cats. And it was kind of weird. And I made a whole like video of it. So, um, you know, the brand Puma, it's like represented by a cat. And we have a lot of celebrities that were linked with Puma for a second. And we have a lot of celebrities that often have black cats or panthers in their videos. Um, we have a lot of, you know, we have like, you know, songs about the cats. Um, just cat symbolism in a lot of artists' videos and things like that. So shape-shifting, yes. Uh, being able to see beyond the veil, knowing what other people are up to because they share energies with a cat. And, you know, the larger the cat, the larger the energy. So like some, some people have black jaguars, black panthers, black cats, you know, regular cats, <laughs> tigers, um, whatever, whatever. So, uh, this was literally sending out a message that I am a multidimensional being. And so you can't really mess with me. <laughs> That's why Nicki Minaj did that song where she was dressed like sick Mitch, Ganja Burn or whatever. If y'all seen that video, because at one point, um, you know, she was not getting along well with the industry and in order to protect her energy, she, you know, personified the segment energy and the snake energy and um, that goddess type of energy to protect her, you know, her field, her aura. And so um, a lot of people realize that, uh, and she also did a song called Megatron, I believe. So she's very much aware of, you know, all the occult and, you know, stuff like that. And she knows how to protect herself and she knows how to continue to thrive in a, in a world where maybe people don't want, or maybe people want to interfere with that or, you know, try to create some kind of, issues around it. So I feel like um, she definitely is giving off that cat like energy. Okay. Um, <laughs> what kind of diet do you feed your cat? Cat food? Sprinkle, sprinkle. You said you do wet and dry food, but I want to replace the dry food because I feel it's not good food. Well, you can mix it or you could give them a treat like once a week with wet food and do dry food through the rest. So it just depends on how you want to mix it up. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, Shira. When I transitioned into my divine female form, my looks, finances, love life became infinitely better. Other, but other than envy and hate, thank you for defending trans people. You are a blessing. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Um, thank you, Aria. Yeah, I think everyone 
I think everyone should realize that people are free to be who they want to be, whether we like it or not, you know, and we shouldn't hate on people who are brave enough to do such a bold thing, especially when they know they're going to be met with a lot of, you know, anger and hate. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank you for the donation, by the way, Aria. Um, my cat ate cat food, but also hunted regularly. Yeah. Cats like to hunt as well. So if you let them out in your backyard or something, they might come back with a lizard or a mouse. I don't, I mean, hopefully not a mouse, but they like to chase lizards, birds, mice, rabbit. I remember my cat caught a rabbit in the backyard and brought it into the house. And all you could hear was the sweet rabbit squealing and it was a bunny. It wasn't even a big rabbit. It was like a baby rabbit. And so we got the rabbit out of the, the cat's mouth and let it go. But there was like a little piece of fur that the cat had ripped off from the rabbit and I kept it. But yeah, they're hunters. Mm -hmm. I, I remember, I don't know if it's on this channel or another channel. Or if I put it on Facebook, I mean, Facebook or Instagram, I don't remember. It might be gone. But I had video of Velvet eating a lizard <laughs> that got into the house. It was like the cat just went and uh, attacked it and ate it. Um, so, and we were like, oh, my gosh. No. You said catnip is drugs for cats. Yeah, they like catnip. Um, they have a catnip spray now. You can also spray. Um, I have like just the kind that looks like dried herbs. You can sprinkle it in their food and they'll get more playful, depending on what kind it is. They even have these cat snacks that have um, catnip in them. I think they're called temptations. <laughs> So the cats were like in love with those. We don't give them to them anymore because they became too, you know, too attached to them. Um, <laughs> so, you know, you love watching your cat trip out on catnip. <laughs> yeah. Haters just made mad because they look, trans look more fab. <laughs> I feel like, you know, I don't even know, like, I think it's mostly, I think it's mostly like um, when cats are able to, you know, communicate with their owners more efficiently and that connection and that bond is created. I also feel like, you know, the cat can also feel like it is your child or it is your family. Because, um, like I said, they literally attach to you like a child would. So um, they really, they really have strong feelings for their owners and humans. So just know that they have a strong connection to you as well. Like it's not just a one-way situation. Okay. You said cats don't need external validation. They sure don't. And we can learn a lot from cats, especially as women. You know, the cat is more linked to the feminine and the dog maybe more to the masculine. So the cats are very, you know, to themselves. They don't need outside validation. They walk around like they're divine. They, they give you the attention when they feel like it and ignore you when they feel like it. And yet you still, you know, really love them. <laughs> so... I think we're going to learn a lot from cats, especially as women. Be more cat-like. Okay. <laughs> if you're afraid of cats, I suggest, you know, going to like a cat, like an animal shelter and just walking around the, the cat section and just looking at them through the cages at first and maybe some kittens and maybe pet a kitten and things like that until you're not afraid anymore. Okay. You said some past pets have been with us in our past lives. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So 
Do you love cats' personalities? We can learn so much. Exactly. Um, yeah, I, cat cafe is where they have cats in the in the coffee shop or the cafe, and you can pet them. So you know, I think there's a giant love for cats. I mean, if you just look up cat videos, they're crazy and everywhere. Uh, I think humanity has really embraced the cat, and for good reason. Okay. So think about all the technology that people have. They have satellites. They have cameras that can go inside the body, inside the earth, you know, wherever. But we have cats. They are multidimensional creatures. They can go from one realm to the next. And so it's almost like having those type of, you know, that type of technology, except it's a spiritual technology. And that's what I feel like a lot of the ancients used before they were given, you know, um, how to create the technology. We used what we had around us. We used the energies that we had. We used the cats and, you know, uh, in ancient in ancient Egypt, they you would see a lot of birds. You would see a lot of cats because of the, their vision and their ability to see from different perspectives. So. You would see like a bird because they could see from above and you would see like, you know, cats because they could see in every realm. That's why in ancient Kemet, you would have different realms, you know, drawn out. You would have the, you know, this world, the afterworld, you know, the, the realm of the gods, da, 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 because they had that vision. They were able to see in all of those realms in order to draw it and to create art with it, to create a whole system using the eyes of a cat. You know what I'm saying? And the eyes of a bird. And they really connected with nature and animals and the earth to create their civilization and, you know, all the natural technology that they had. Um... What's the difference between cat and snake energy? Uh, I think cats are more multidimensional. I think snake energy is more, you know, with, um, you know, knowledge, wisdom, and, you know, um, cleverness. Um, but I do feel like cats are, like, definitely linked to snakes as well. Uh, especially domesticated cats, I feel like they could have a hybrid um, like connection to snakes because of their fangs, the way they hiss and their eye color, definitely very snake-like versus a lion, a panther, you know, their eyes are very different. Their eyes are more round with the pupil, but then you have cats with the snake eyes that reflect. Okay. Um, All right. So you connect with goddess energy, goddess Hecate through the five cows, dogs and crows. Okay. Yeah, that's understandable. Like there are just some people that are dog people because I know that there are dog people and I know that there are cat people or there's people that like both. So whatever your energy is drawn to the most, that's probably, you know, best. But if you really want to, you know, shake things up, get you a cat. <laughs> okay. You really want to go further and get you a cat. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Oh, thank you for the cash app, Latara. I appreciate you. You like the cat topic? Thanks for the cash app. So um, you say you're a dog mom. Yeah. I'm, I've always been a cat person. So but I know that there have to be dog moms too, right? Mm -hmm. um, you said... Thank you. Like the background. Yes, I got kitties up there. Um, I like this background because I felt like it represent what I'm going to talk about. Because like you see these little energy plasma balls or whatnot. You have the cat in the astral realm. And it's just chilling because that's its, you know, nature. <laughs> okay. Okay. So, yeah, if you don't have a cat, maybe if your friend has a cat, maybe you can cat sit and see if you like the cats. I don't know. 
You said dogs are if you want to do a lot of nurturing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the, uh, a lot of different cultures have cats as, you know, emblems of good luck. And I know like uh, they have the white cat that represents luck in, you know, different parts of Asia. And you got Hello Kitty is so big. And, you know, you just have a lot of, you know, cat symbolism everywhere because it is, you know, very important to the human race, especially if you practice magic or if you have, you know, astral traveled before and you have cats, you can go a lot further um, and see a lot more because the cat's vibe and the cat's frequency allows you to do so. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, so naturally as a human being, okay, you have a frequency, it's why. You can, you can increase it and stuff like that with the elixirs and all that kind of stuff. But uh, imagine if you took that frequency and combined it with a cat, it's gonna be even bigger. You know what I'm saying? So you're gonna have way more. You're gonna know way more. <laughs> you're gonna know a lot. You're gonna feel a lot. You're gonna be more in tuned with things that other people are not. So, and it's a subtle energy because cats are used to it. So you're less likely to freak out. You're less likely to have issues dealing with, you know, such, you know, um, frequencies because the cat will help you. I think a lot of people had issues adjusting to this 5G and this frequency change and this shift that's happening um, that didn't have cats. I think a lot of people had a lot of issues because the cats definitely absorb a lot of that energy that was being fed to us or, you know, coming through with this shift and the 5G energy and all that kind of stuff. A lot of people did not have a way to, you know, neutralize that. You know, you can use crystals and stuff and all that, but a cat is definitely going to help you a lot more. Um, you're great. A cat visited me this morning. So divine. Yes. Thank you, Taisha. Oh, sorry. I, I, I thought you were one of my members named Taisha. Okay. Tashala. Thank you, girl. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Appreciate you. Thanks for the super chat. So, you know, we used to feed stray cats um, when we didn't have a cat. Uh huh. So that's good. If you see a stray cat, feed it. <laughs> what if you do if your cat is a little dumb it means well <laughs> I think cats can also benefit from humans as well so when I was talking about linking yourself to a cat like through blood or women used to do it through breast milk back in the old days uh, cats can also benefit from humans as well. So they can learn a lot more about us, what we like, how we feel, and da 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 in order to better protect us or better, you know, uh, be a, you know, be a cat to us. Uh, they also may get to experience what it feels like to be a, a person or part of a person or, you know, the frequency of a person. Um, they'd be like, you know what, y'all Y'all don't have to see everything I have to see. You see just one aspect. We see like in multiple dimensions at one time. It's like being in a crowded room and each realm that you take away, the less people you're able to see. Okay. So you might be in a room with 10 people and not even know it. And every time a realm or a veil is lifted, you see more and more people when you're seeing through the eyes of a cat. Um, and so this cat may see, you know, five energies in one place, but when they're able to focus and see through the eyes of human, they may only see the humans in, you know, physical form that aren't literally there. So, you know, in order to merge that energy between a cat and a human, you know, we're, we're able to sense more and the cat is able to, you know, also sense more and warn us of what, you know, people's energy, like, you know how a cat does not like certain people and they have, you know, 
they don't go near that pe that person or allow that person to pet them because they have a bad energy. When you're linked with a cat, you develop the same, you know, type of ability to see and feel people's energy on a higher level. So you already know that they're sus. <laughs> okay. You're not even going to have to worry about it. You're just going to be like, nope, don't even, don't even bother. <laughs> Next. Because you're able to sense that because you're linked with that feline energy. Okay. Do I work with light energy? I work with, uh, honestly, what is light energy to you? Because I think a lot of people have different definitions of it. Um, I work, if I work with anything, it's everything. I don't fear one side or the other. You know, you need both in this world to create. So I do everything. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of people who are new to spiritual path or only choose to work with light or da, 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 you're missing out on a lot. <laughs> All right. Um, your dog communicates with his eyes. It freaks you out. <laughs> you understand a whole animal. He's so protected. Well, that's great. You know, they're good protectors in the physical realm. Um, you said, how do we charge a cat statue if we can't get a cat? Um, well, there's um, spells or things that the ancient Egyptians used to read, um, you know, with Bast, the goddess Bast. You get a Bast statue, and that definitely has the goddess Bast energy, which is a black cat. Um, so you just connect it to that goddess. Mm -hmm. They even sell cat fur on, online, on Etsy some witchcraft hoodoo stores if you want to put some cat fur on it or under it so whatever you choose to do um uh oh thank you sprinkle sprinkle got another cash out the cats love your son and your son love them too but unfortunately he's highly allergic oh they have hairless cats but i don't know how much help that would be but um, yeah, it's sad because some people actually who do love cats and are allergic, they literally go get a shot for allergies so that they can own cats. So yeah, it's sad when you're allergic, huh? Um, what do I think the connection with connection between NC and cats is seeing on their Teams were both the cats, CLT Bobcats, formerly known as the Panthers. Um, oh, North Carolina and cats. And teams and both cats, Bobcats. Uh, um, I don't know. I think they just wanted to keep a cat. <laughs> I have no idea. I don't, I don't have any interest in sports, so I wouldn't really be... I mean, you could figure it out, just North Carolina, the city, I don't know, figure it out. Do the code code work on it. Thanks for being a member, Tashala, thank you. Um, let me see something. Okay, so let me, let me get into a darker aspect, y'all. We are talking about the cats. So, okay, you know how we can link ourselves to cats, right? Well, there are people that link themselves to other people as well. I will repeat that. There are people that want to link themselves to other people. So that's why you have to be very cautious of who you are around and spend your, spend your time with. Um. <laughs> Yeah. And the link is not permanent. It wears off over time. So if you want to reconnect, you definitely can relink yourself um, or not. So a lot of times people are linked to other people via their DNA 
And if you want to really unlink yourself from someone, get you a cat. <laughs> no spell required. Just have the cat sit on you, girl. It will literally or link yourself with a cat. And the cat will draw out any negative energies that are linked to you that you don't want. Because, you know, the cat can sense when how you feel about a certain energy. And they can go ahead and draw it out. So get you a cat. And sometimes that energy will try to come back. And when that energy tries to come back, the cat will catch it again. So if you want to, you know, allow yourself to understand, like you don't always have to do like, because what, what spells do is it's a mental, um, you know, psychological way to break a link with someone or a bond with someone. But if you get a cat, it takes the energy. It's not going to just be mental. It's going to be, you know, spiritual as well. So you just get you a cat. And the bond is going to be easily broken to that energy, especially if it's like a man or a woman that you were with or, you know, someone that you didn't like. It will definitely break all that energy up faster and more efficiently. And if it tries to return, it will catch it. OK. <laughs> so. You said, what about a cat statue? Um. I would, I don't know, but I think that one is more for protection versus, you know, breaking a bond or a link that you physically have. You would need a physical cat to break the physical bond. You know what I'm saying? Um, so like, you know, get one <laughs> or babysit or cat sit one or go to the, uh, the, the animal shelter and pet on one and, you know, take one out to get to know in the little room that they let you you know, pet cats in. Okay. And it's a fun thing to do when you're bored and you don't have anything else to do. Go visit some cats. Um, there's a book and it's an old book and I don't even know if I still have it. It's called The Cat Cult or The Cult of Cat. And it says, it has a, a lot of stuff in it. It was probably written in the 70s. And there's a lot of interesting facts on cats in there. <laughs> So link yourself with cats, protect yourself, easily break bonds. Do y'all remember a while ago in the news when um, this former drummer for a certain big celebrity said that this celebrity was a witch and killed her kitten or her cat? Um, I think that was literally representing, um, the bond because, you know, some people are cray cray and, you know, they may bind themselves to you or bind themselves to a cat to go and spy on you in the astral realm or whatnot or whatever, whatever, I don't know. But remember when I told you guys that some people would, you know, um, uh, would do that and I like I think a lot of people don't realize that when when you are bound to a cat and if the other people have you know some type of insight or cats as well then they can sense when someone is sending their astral body to you know spy or see what people are doing and a lot of them use cats to do this you know <laughs> And sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh, I believe Jay-Z even had a Puma jet, which is a cat. And it was a private jet with the Puma on it. You know. So astral travel, you know, traveling through sky. I don't know, you know. Um How do you direct people trying to steal your light energy when you're out without your cat? Um, if you're linked to your cat, 
they they're not gonna be able to do it anyway darling link yourself to your cat if you are afraid of that um the cats are divine by nature so like i was talking about divinity last night if you have a trouble feeling divine associate yourself with a cat goddess or link yourself to a cat okay you said Erica Badu daughter is named Puma. Mm -hmm. Cat energy. Um, they don't cut all bonds. Like you have, like if you're linked to your cat, and when you think about a certain person and you feel negative, that energy that you're producing that is negative. It's going to be drawn out by the cat. And so the cat is going to understand that you don't like this energy. You don't like this type of energy that is associated with the person that you're thinking of. Okay. So naturally, every time you think of the person or the person interferes with you uh, spiritually in some way, they're going to go ahead and just remove that because they know what you like and what you don't like. Okay. Uh, you said, what if the ex got you the cat? Are you bonded with the cat? It doesn't matter who got it for you. It matters if you're bonded to the cat or not, you know. So, um, yeah. He said, how do you train a cat not to scratch you? Feed it and then don't feed it when it scratches you. <laughs> Tell it no. I mean, they understand. Mm -hmm. Some cats are just crazy and wild because they're more, you know, they were taken away from their mothers too soon. So they're more feral. So um, you're just going to have to train them a little bit. Okay. My cash app, it's underneath my name right here. It's dollar sign, she, raw seven, capital S, capital R, capital S. Um, thank you. You said, is visiting a cat shelter once a week enough? Yeah. I mean, a lot of people volunteer at cat shelters or they just go and visit and, you know, pet cats. How do you know if the cat has a gentle personality like when you pick them? Um, well, the way that I pick my cats is, you know, if you go to a place where you can adopt cats or pets, they allow you to take the cat into a room and get to know it to see if you guys bond or click or not. So that's how you'll know. Um, mm-hmm. How do you know? Yeah. So that's how I knew. Hmm. My cat does have a personality. Your personality. Exactly. Okay. Thank you, angelic goddess. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Thank you, Ashira. I go to a crystal store at least once a month and their cat always rubs itself on my legs. I just don't understand why. Thoughts. Oh, that's so sweet. Well, they're trying to like acknowledge you. And also, um, you know, they like to give you some of their energy, their positive energy, you know, as well. They also, when, if they put their cheek on you, like right here, they're putting their scent on you as well. You know, and if you have a cat scent on you, that may also deter negative energies or entities or whatever, you know. Um, now, if you are going to just walk in your divinity, you don't, you know, and have the, you know, the aspect, the mentality of a cat and you create a higher frequency and, you know, uh, it's very similar, but it's more um, efficient to actually have a cat. You know what I'm saying? Um, that's why villains always have cats. <laughs> Because they be spying on people and they have cats that can, you know, give them more insight into what's going on. But I don't believe that cats are only for villains. I just think that they're often associated with villains because villains seem ominous and like they have insight and like they're powerful, and, you know, they have that cat like energy. So, uh, <laughs> I, I do feel like they do have an edge. Um, so, you know, I think it's kind of cute. Okay. So you said you feel calm and at ease when watching my videos. Oh, thank you. 
You got ADHD? Well, I'm glad that you like my videos and are calm when you watch. How do you bind yourself to the cat blood? Just feed them some of your blood. You can prick your finger, put in their cat food or water. Uh, probably cat food is better because it's more potent and not watered down. Um, and you could do that as, you know, maybe it wears off over time. So if you want to strengthen the bond, maybe do it every month or every other month. I don't know. This is not a whole lot, just a couple drops. That's it. That's all it really takes. So, um, <laughs> if you have breast milk, you could feed the cat breast milk, whatever. Do whatever you want. I'm going to leave that up to y'all. <laughs> um, you said the universe sends us stray cats all the time. I had five black black ones that stay here because we feed them. Oh, you just lost one? Oh, so sad. What do you think about people who purchase cats? What do you mean purchase them? I mean, it's... People can do whatever they want. Um, some people like different breeds. And so in order to get a breed that you might want, you might have to purchase. Um, today is Tuesday. What are some good spells to do on Tuesday? Eh, I really do spells like weekly anymore but um you can look that up online i definitely feel like i think anything you want to banish some type of banishing energy uh spells definitely good for tuesday or something that you want to um you know conquer definitely good on a tuesday because um it's associated with war <laughs> like Mars. And so anything you want to, you know, defeat or banish. Okay. Yeah, it's more powerful to create your own spells, definitely. Um, it's... <laughs> The dog smell. I don't know. You got Siamese cats. Oh, how cute. So, you know, now if y'all are going to do this, I don't know. Remember, astral travel is going to be easier. So, if you're afraid of astral traveling, maybe hold off on it a little bit. But it, you'll definitely have more protection if you're linked with the cat and you do astral travel. So, just put it that way. Let's put it that way. <laughs> Why some men hate cats? I think they represent, literally represent divine femininity uh, because of how they act and what the goddesses that they're linked to and associated with. And cats can smell BS from a mile away. You know what I'm saying? So they know when someone has good intentions or not for you. And they will let you know. Cats can read people very easily. Can someone sense you put a spell on them? Um, I think if you are putting spells on people, I think they'll be able to tell something is off. And sometimes when people can tell, they literally do whatever they feel is necessary to combat it. Um, sometimes they don't feel like they need to do anything because they don't feel like spells take effect of them. So, but they might have a sense of who sent it or who did it. <laughs> um, so I only definitely recommend putting spells on people that are already um, devoted to you or you know things like that so like if you are married or if you have children and you want to keep them safe or something, if y'all are still doing the spell work, you know, aspect of 
you know, magic. But I don't think we should be putting spells on other people that have free will only because not because it's wrong, <laughs> but because it is not of self-confidence or higher confidence. You know what I mean? Like it's the equivalent to literally being a pygmisha in the spiritual realm. <laughs> okay. So I feel like if you have to do all that, that person really doesn't want you. If it's a love spell, if you have to do like spells on people to, you know, do certain things and you can't get them to do it by just asking them, it's a little bit pygmisha ish. And it shows that you have, that you're insecure or have low self-esteem or can't move on to the next and do better, you know, put that energy into finding a better person or a better situation. So I feel like not because it's wrong, but because it's pygmisha ish, it's like you can't um, do better. You feel like that's the best you can do, or you only want this person or this situation because you can't do better. So the best revenge is to go get better or in the best love spell is when they already love you and you can increase the love and pretty much get even more out of it. So for example, if you're doing a love spell on somebody who don't even love you or don't even like you, you're not going to get much out of it. But if you're doing a love spell on somebody who loves you, it's just going to intensify that love and you're going to be able to get things easier without having to do anything. So remember that. Better to find someone who already likes you than somebody who don't even want you, you know? All right. <laughs> the pick me witch. Uh -huh. You know, there's a lot of pick me witches out there, girl. We don't want but Now, if you're going to do an attraction spell, do a general attraction spell. That way it's not on a specific person. Okay, that's less pick me. But it is bringing in, you know, energies of, you know, potential partners or people that may want to get to know you, not a specific person. Okay. <laughs> he said for first cat, you'd rather have a female or a male one. Hmm. I've had both. So I can tell you the difference. Male cats are going to be more territorial and they like to mark their territory sometimes. So they might pee on stuff more than a female cat would. So I'll just leave you with that. And But if they've been spayed and neutered, you may not have a big problem with the male cat, but still sometimes they have that natural instinct to pee on stuff. Okay. <laughs> so I would say if you don't want to deal with that, just get the female cat. Mm -hmm. But I've had both. The male cats would pee more and mark their territories. Um, after realizing it, I said, oh no, pick me your witch. <laughs> the cat is a boy, he's territorial. He has peed on stuff before, yeah, see? Um, Does your face show feline features after linking with a cat? I don't know. I mean, I think they could, or you may create a more feline look. Um, I believe either way, it, you might, yes. And let's think about some of the great felines in video history. Okay, so on the greatest video of all time thriller michael jackson actually turned into a were cat not a werewolf and he always has a black panther where he's shape-shifting on the black and white video he's had cats and stuff most of his life and um then janet jackson has black cat song then we had the weekend driving in his car on starboy with the black panther then we have the Black Panther and their, you know, goddess is vast. And so you have a lot of links with cats that go throughout, you know, entertainment. 
and the industry because cats are, you know, very powerful. Okay. Mm -hmm. Um, they're interdimensional travelers as well. Shapeshifters get insight from other worlds. Okay. So, um, When I see her videos on there, I can y'all talking about TikTok. Okay. So um so yes, that was a weird cat, not a werewolf. You can tell it was a weird cat because werewolves have snouts and the cat have like little whiskers and this little, you know, little curve with the little cat cheeks. And that's exactly what the mask looked like. And so definitely a cat, a weird cat. Okay. You said Freddie Merc Mercury had his cats too. Mm -hmm. And then if you watch the video, remember the time, the opening scene is of a cat. In the very beginning, you're gonna see a cat could be like a baby lion or something, but it's still a cat. Um, and also the end scene ends with a cat. So that's how he was able to travel through time, space, and interdimensions to get back to ancient Kemet was through the energy and the frequency that the cat opened the video and closed it. And, you know, the hourglass in that video, remember the time, represented the dark cosmic energy flowing through time and space. And yeah. <laughs> yeah, I said Black Panther too, yes. Their goddess was Bast. You said, why are people afraid of black cats? Because they have a bad rap. Um, I think a lot of people just listen to superstitions and they don't do enough research and reading. And so fear often is a result to not knowing a lot of things. So I always say, if you want to get rid of fear, like learn about it as much as you can and the fear will be gone. So um, it's, it's literally just people rather believe the superstitions and stay in fear than learn more about it. Uh -huh. Now he turned into a cat in Thriller, not a wolf. It's a weird cat. Yeah. It's a weird cat. If you look it up, if you write, if you go in and do search where cat thriller will pop up because it wasn't, it was not a wolf. It was a cat. A lot of people don't know that. So like you're going to, you're going to see it was literally a cat and not a wolf. Okay. So you type in a where cat, look what pops up and you see that's not a face of a wolf. That's a cat. Look at the eyes. That's not a wolf's eyes. You remember at the end when his eyes turned into the cat eyes? Uh oh, the green screen is messing with. So that's literally a cat. Wolf. Wolves have snouts and things like that. This is a cat. Wolf's ears are different. So literally, it's it's not a wolf. It's a cat. So. I think that was like one of the things that most people missed or was kind of hidden, but literally it's just a cat. Billie Jean, yep, tiger, the, the Billie Jean video had a tiger on it. So, uh, there was a lion in black and white video. So all, like a lot of his videos have cats in it. <laughs> uh huh. Then you have like all these stupid cat videos on YouTube with cats dancing to Thriller. It's hilarious. The Thriller cat videos pop up. <laughs> anyway. Um, so that cat energy is definitely um, shape-shifting, astral travel, multidimensional energies. The major Nike brand is mentioning 
you're saying sprinkle, sprinkle, really? <laughs> I don't know about all that, but you know, maybe I can get me a sponsorship. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Uh, you always have the same cats sitting on your front door and garden door every day like they are guarding something. Oh, that's so sweet. Maybe they are. You know, uh, cats like to domesticate themselves. They're the only animal that does that. They domesticate themselves. So feed the cats. Feed the cats. Um, you said you saw a check mark Nike commenting on a fan video that had a million views. Oh my gosh, send it to me on Instagram. Sprinkle, sprinkle. Sati, if you can still find it. I'm on Instagram, Shira7 or Shira Star Goddess on Instagram and I'm verified so you know it's me. Um so send it to me girl. Sprinkle sprinkle. Send it to me Sassy. <laughs> you say go get that Nike money. Uh I don't know if it's gonna come to that, but I would like to see it because that's funny. All right. Mm-hmm. It says where cats are for more powerful, far more powerful than werewolves and second most common shapeshifter. Ooh, Erica, I know, what? See, you taught me something. Um, Well, there you have it. Because cats are interdimensional, but maybe werewolves aren't. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for that. You said haters go in jars, period. <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. Okay, call me the sprinkle sprinkle lady on Twitter. Well, okay, well, you know, I guess I'll take it. I got merch too. I had made these t-shirts for my other channel. And you can you can change the color up or the style or the, the quality, but I have to sprinkle, sprinkle merch on my community section. You got to scroll way down or I'll try to link it again uh, of the Shira 7 channel. So. Eh. You say you heard cats turn into our dragons. Oh my God, I, should, I didn't know that. <laughs> um, I was watching this movie this weekend with Sasha. Or, yeah, and it's called Chupa, and it's about the Chupacabra, but it's a cute little family movie, and the Chupacabra is, like, so cute and sweet. It looks like a mix between a bird, dog, and a cat. <laughs> so, if y'all want a good kids movie, watch that. It's so sweet. Um, mm-hmm. You said your cat has been spayed. You often wonder if that affects her energy. No, I don't think it does. I think, um, I don't think it, it, it affects it at all because the cats are naturally interdimensional creatures already. And, you know, um, they're already linked to other realms. So, and to the divine feminine. Um... Your cat has, okay, yeah. So I don't, it might, you know, it might make them feel like, you know, give them a little stuffed animal because, or give them another cat if you want them to have, but it has to be a kitten or a cat very much younger than them and smaller than them in order for them to fulfill their mater maternal instincts. Okay. Yeah, the weird cat from Thriller. That wasn't a wolf. Okay. <laughs> and the reason why I feel like, okay, so why a were cat? Why zombies? Why the time change? Why the different screens or reality? So if you break down the whole concept of thriller, you have people watching a movie back in time. So it was like in the 50s, right? And then you have them him turning into a were cat. And then when they leave the theater, they're in the modern time. So this is shape-shifting, time travel. And then when they go, um, you know, walking around, then zombies pop up. 
And then he shapeshifts from zombie to, you know, human. And then everything merges when he goes to get the girl out of the house and he opens his eyes and they're the weird cat thriller eyes at the end. And then in the back on the fireplace in that like house, there's an obelisk like from ancient Kemet. And so uh, you're getting that, that feline energy that, you know, he went back to get the girl, you know, he asked her to be his girl in the beginning. Then, you know, he chased her around going in and out of zombie hood, you know, and then all of a sudden he went back to get her as the were cat. <laughs> so it was very interesting. So you have a lot of shape shifting time travel and, you know, masculine and feminine energy bonding. Okay. Thank you, Sprinkle Sprinkle. Beyonce's alter ego was Sasha Fierce, which was said Sasha translates into segment. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I don't, I mean, I don't know if it translates into that. I know Sasha is short for Alexandria or Alexander, which had to do a lot with uh, some of some of the things in ancient Kemet. So it, you, it may be able to trace back to that. Possibly. I never tried to trace it back, but you know, it could possibility. If I, if I did the research, I probably could connect it. Um, do you think the girl was lost in the astral plane in thriller music video and he had to rescue her as the were cat? So yeah, let me put this up because this is, yes, I definitely feel that was the dead. It was like the dead spirits and the energies in the astral plane or, you know, the, the, the realm of the dead. And he was able to go in and out because he was part where cat. He could, he could, you know, shape shift and go into different dimensions and realms. Yes. See y'all, y'all are teaching me stuff too, or pointing things out that I didn't even put together. I probably might have put it together, but y'all put it together, you know, quick. <laughs> All right. Um, so definitely feel like, you know, definitely that makes perfect sense. So thank you, Janisa. Sprinkle spray. Um, one of your favorite MJ videos. Yeah. Um, do I recommend connecting with big felines as well? Um, I think whatever, I think if you can get one, and Tony Montana had one on Scarface. <laughs> he was pushing it. He said he was pushing it to the limit. <laughs> Um, you could make mad gifts. I don't know. Fierce, Sir, Sasha Fierce gives big cat energy. Okay. Scarface, where he had a tiger. Mm hmm. So, um, yeah. I'm going to wrap this up because, you know, I think people got the, the gist of this, you know, the cat's energy, get you some cat stuff, um, cat statue. If you have a cat, take care of your cat. Don't make a cat mad. <laughs> I mean, you have to, you do have to, if the cat is bad, like in order to discipline a cat, um, you know, you have to let them know that you love, love them, but you want them to do a certain thing. Uh oh, thank you, Shakira. And I appreciate that. So, you know, don't hit them, um, like a cage or a kennel is punishment enough. If you just keep them in there for a little while, if they're not used to it, but then let them out. 
uh, if your cat is acting bad. So whenever they act bad and do something that you don't like, like scratching you, you put them in their kennel or the little cat carrier and then let them out. And when they, they'll get the correlation that when they do something bad, they're going in the kennel. So they'll stop doing it. You don't have to, you know, be mean to the cats. You just use that to discipline them. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you got a cat necklace. Do I think Beyonce is a witch? I think most women in the industry have to become witches to protect themselves. Uh, that's all I'm going to say. You go in there blind and dumb, you're going to get got. Sprinkle, sprinkle. If you're going to be in the industry, you have to know some stuff in order to protect yourself. Period. Um, so anybody in the industry probably definitely knows a lot about the spiritual aspect of it and the occult aspect of it because there's no way that you can escape it so you either have to learn it or get got by it either way <laughs> um so it's not a bad thing i always say it's not a bad thing you better go in with some knowledge that's all i can tell you um that's why a lot of people leave the industry they don't understand or they don't want to they may have been raised in the church and you know and so they don't really equip themselves with the type of knowledge that they would need to create the circumstance that they need in the industry. So I do believe that a lot of people will practice witchcraft, spirituality, you know, learn about alchemy and all that stuff to protect themselves in the industry. Uh, if they don't, then oops. Uh a lot of times you'll see celebrities link up with a certain goddess that will be represented in their videos so that people know not to mess with them <laughs> as well. It's not always what we think. It's not always, you know, thinking it's bad. It's a way of saying this, you know, it's kind of like gangs. It's kind of like throwing up gang signs. This is who, this is who I rep, so don't mess with me. You know, <laughs> This is who's repping me and who I'm repping. So y'all don't mess with this, this energy, okay? So some people use cat energy, got cat goddess energy, bass segment energy, Lilith energy. And, you know, uh, it's mostly going to be female energy because female energy is the fiercest energy, okay? So you're never going to see somebody, you know, uh, repping some, you know, <laughs> You know, some entities and energies, they're always going to be outdone by that feminine or feline energy. So you'll see a lot of people pledging and honoring certain, you know, female energies and entities. Okay. You said Nicki Minaj alter ego was a male Roman. Yeah, but then she turned into segment on the ganja burn, which is even more powerful, you know. So, I mean, it's a learning process. You, know, you learn. Okay. <laughs> yeah, they all seem to honor the divine feminine in some way. They do, because they have to. That's the only way to get, you know, their protections. <laughs> so, they figured it out, though. Doja Cat went to the dark side and the Illuminati got her good. They bleached her hair. They didn't do that. She did that. <laughs> um, no, I do believe Doja Cat is very smart and she knows what she's doing. Let me ask you a question. If someone wanted access to you spiritually, mentally, physically, because you were an attractive woman, in the industry, they get a little taste of fame and then they dangle a carrot and they say, okay, well now in order to keep your status and your fame and all that you work for, you got to do this because you're an attractive woman. Let's, you know, let's exploit you. And she said, no, I'm going to shave all my hair, my eyebrows, and I'm going to look like a, a hot mess. So you won't even want to exploit me anymore. So a lot of women go through that in the industry because 
they don't want to be exploited. So they make themselves very crazy looking so that the male gaze is no longer an issue. All right. So that's all Doja Cat's doing. She knows what she's doing. She's smart. Um, and when you become famous, people want to handle your image. They want to handle your image, your very image. They want to say, no, I think you should do this. I think you should do that with your image. I think, you know, they don't care what you want. You become like their puppet after. But when you reclaim your individuality and take it back by doing something super drastic, such as taking away everything they wanted to exploit, they can't exploit you anymore. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a power. It's a very powerful feminine move, I would say. Oh, uh, it's a very powerful feminine move. And I, I respect her for that. And a lot of people are thinking she's like in the Illuminati and worshiping the devil and all this kind of stuff. But really what she's doing is taking away the power of being, you know, people trying to exploit her. Um, you said, what about clones? Um, I feel that I don't feel like there are literal clones. I feel that people can imitate you. I feel like people can imitate your voice through, you know, technology. But I don't think that there are physical clones unless you hire a lookalike <laughs> or put a silicone mask on someone and give them that voice changing technology. I mean, you can create one physically, but I don't feel like there are literal clones, not of humans anyway but they can create what looks like a clone with technology and silicone masks and things like that. That's all, or lookalikes, okay? Like, I don't believe that there are real clones. And I think Kanye, somebody's talking about Kanye, he's still alive, that's why he changed his name to Ye. Because you can't clone, if you can't clone someone that won't allow you to. That's why he keeps flipping and flopping and changing and saying crazy things. So even if they do try to cre recreate him, his reputation is so bad, they can't use him to get no money. <laughs> He's doing the same thing that Doja is, not allowing people to exploit him. So when you're looking at things, like if you're, you know, especially if you're linked with a cat, that's why he made the Poopity Scoop song. Y'all remember the Poopity Scoop? Poop, poop with cats meow, meowing in the background. Meow, 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 meow. Meow, 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 meow. Poopity scoop. Scoopity poop. Poopity scoop. He was telling y'all right there what he was getting ready to do. Link with a cat. So, honestly, Kanye knows exactly what he's doing. He's not a clone. He changed his name and took away all powers for people to exploit or even want to try to emulate or clone him. So even if they did clone him, and he has all this bad reputation and they can't make money off the clone. Why didn't the clone go and apologize? <laughs> okay, sprinkle, sprinkle. So be careful what you believe and use your own thinking when it comes to these people because a lot of times they're acting a certain way to break people from exploiting them that simple but if you want to believe in clones that is definitely up to you i don't believe in physical clones i believe in man-made created technologically advanced technology that you could use with a silicone mask to create a look-alike i definitely feel that way now if you are talking about a mental clone taking someone's mentality and their personality and putting it in someone else through a frequency, you're never going to 100% be able to do it correctly because your essence can't be transferred, only your consciousness, you know what I'm saying? But your essence can never be transferred. So I do feel like that. I, I'm not one of those people that believe everything because I research too, 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 too much, like literally too, too much to believe in real clones, okay?
but they are, you're able to see a physical representation of another person that sounds just like another person through technology and masks. Yes, I do. So if you want to believe in clones, then go ahead. I don't. <laughs> okay. And that is still yay. And he know what he doing. He's, he's a wizard and a magician within himself. Believe me, because you can I when you know, you know, you can see stuff like when he took all the Balenciaga and bought it and put it in his warehouse and had 2024 embroidered on it and sold each piece for twenty dollars. That was a spell. And shortly after that, that Balenciaga campaign came out. Because what do you think that spell was doing when he snatched up all the Balenciaga he could buy from every store, put them in his warehouse and embroidered the numbers 2024 on it and sold it to anybody with $20 that wanted to buy it on the internet. What do you think that represents? If you really just are a you know, a magician and you know what spell work is, what do you think that, that they did? Why do you think the Balenciaga kids were in chains? Because clothing represents, what does clothing represent? A cover, right? A shelter and a cover. And you sew your name on the back of something, Balenciaga. Um, you know, Whoever is, you know, using Balenciaga as a frequency or a god or some type of energy, because it is linked to energy. Um, now, you know, instead of the very rich wearing them or carrying their energy, now anybody with $20 is carrying their energy. So a broke person who maybe works somewhere where they make minimum wage could now afford a Balenciaga sweatshirt with 2020 on it. I mean, 2024 on it, which if you add that up equals eight, which is eternity symbol, which is a spell that everyone who is wearing this Balenciaga has now created an energy for eternity for this brand and whoever is connected to it, whoever is profiting off of it, whoever tried to exploit other people off of it is now in eternally bound. He even made a song called Bound. So he's binding these fools in his warehouse and then selling their thousands of dollars worth of merchandise for $20. That is a spell, okay? He is a magician. He is very much a genius. He's very, very smart. And they don't make clones like that, okay? They don't make clones to do magic against industry, big industry that tries to, you know, exploit people. They don't do that. <laughs> that is straight up pity, and no clone will be able to do that. All right. So... He said, in the movie Soul, they use that cat as a vessel. Mm -hmm. And guess who's in the hospital right now? Who also played in the movie Soul? Jamie Foxx. Um, He had did a recent interview where he was wearing an outfit and then he had like this white hat on that was kind of tilted, right? And he was in a, he was getting ready to come out with a movie on Netflix with Cameron Diaz and he only had eight days left to film. Now, let's put these numbers together. Let's put all this together. What, what are we talking about? You know, and so... Um, When you when when genius teaches other people how to get out of contracts and movies and get paid, whether they complete the work or not. Or, you know, sometimes they did not want to even do the film in the first place, but, you know, they wanted their money either way. Eight eternal, you know, eternity. 
not wanting to finish the film, fake an injury. Um, either way, you can get out of a contract if you have medical issues. So I'm just saying, I don't know if it's true or not, but it would be very convenient. He said, Soul was deep movie. Mm -hmm. um, there you go. You love, I never saw the movie Soul. Um, Sasha and I always think that any did. <laughs> Sasha and I always see things for what they really are sometimes. And we did not watch the movie Soul because we felt that it was not representing, um, you know, as it should have. Sasha, Sasha asked me, and this, this wasn't me, this was my child. She says, why every time there is a Disney movie with black people in it, the black people spend most of the movie as another creature or a soul versus in their own bodies. Like Princess and the Frog, she spent most of the film as a frog and soul spends most of the film as a soul and not a person. So she said she didn't want to watch it because they'd be uh, misrepresenting. <laughs> uh, I said, okay, Sasha, you do what you got to do. I, I'm not going to watch it either. She liked Princess and the Frog, but she said she, she peeps. She said she peeping what they're doing. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, yeah, okay. Gotcha. You said your daughter said the exact same thing? Exactly. And they, you know, a lot of kids are aware now and they're very much peeping. What's going on? Um, so anyway, okay, so let's go back to, let's go, let's go back to the cat energy. So do y'all remember when Beyonce came out with black is, uh, was, what was that? Black is King on Disney. She only released it on Disney. And if you look at the, the videos, there's a lot of cat energy and goddess energy in there um, as well. And perhaps, you know, they knew that Beyonce was going to make them a lot of money. And, you know, maybe they were trying <laughs> to, you know, put some, some of that energy onto the Disney Channel. But still, you know, there's a lot of cat energy in that, you know, in that film. Um. All right. Mm -hmm. Me and your 14 year old daughter watched anime. Okay. That was the only reason I signed up for Disney plus me too. But we still have it because, um, you know, the kids like it, but yeah, that was, that's why we got it. <laughs> so they knew what they were doing. Where does the belief in seven lives of cats come from? I think it's nine lives because cats always land on their feet. So like if they get into a dangerous situation, it, it almost seems like they should die, but they don't. They always survive. <laughs> um, there was this video of a cat jumping out of a burning building that was like five stories high and the cat landed on its feet and ran away. So I think it's because they are so agile and they're able to survive like falling out of a tree or jumping long distances or, you know, escaping things because they're so fast. Mm -hmm. This is the nine realms. Mm -hmm. They could also have a lot to do with it. The nine different dimensions and realms that they're able to access and live in. And they're also able to uh, like see other energies as well, see other lives. And I think they also are able to, you know, I think they also have a lot of ability when it comes to like shape shifting and time travel. 
You said, so does D Beyonce sell her energy influence to Disney at the Dubai Hotel? Um, I think what Beyonce is doing is her, like, she's bringing in the divine feminine energy to certain places. So, um, and she went to Dubai, right? And was lifted up in the waters, in the, in the, sprink in the sprinkle sprinkle, in, you know, the, the waters, and in Dubai, and they lifted her up. She had on a red dress. So this was a this was a ritual lifting up of the divine feminine in a place where they don't really lift up the divine feminine. Okay, so that might have been part of her contract. They may not have been aware exactly what they were doing, or that maybe they were. But she went over there and say, "Well, if I'm gonna do this, y'all gonna lift me up high in the sky." in this red dress, and I'm finna be singing. Um, so it was literally um, a ritual of, you know, raising up the divine feminine. Okay. But people will agree to anything if Beyonce agrees to perform. You know, they're going to make lots of money on the tickets. Um. So y'all have y'all also have to remember that people also have their own agendas individually, not just as a whole. And, you know, some people say, "Well, I'm not doing it unless I can raise up the divine feminine. I'm not going to the Super Bowl unless I can perform high up in the sky in red as the divine feminine." You know, um, Rihanna. So a lot of women are, you know, um, with this whole raising up of the divine feminine, and that's what they're going to represent when they perform. People are going to pay them for it because they make a lot of money on tickets. Okay. Yes, the Atlantis Royal House where she performed exactly. Um. What is the divine feminine? It's the divine primordial energy that creates all that you see. <laughs> the mother. The great mother, people call. Okay. Um, also, a lot of people think that right now the, the shift... Uh, from patriarchy back to the divine feminine or matriarchy is coming into play. So it's going to be the end of patriarchy and the beginning of, you know, the divine feminine rising in society throughout the world, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> yes. So, it's definitely going to be a big shift and it's going to be going to towards the feminine. Um, this has been already told from a long, long, long time ago. So that's just all that's happening right now. And I think cats have a lot to do with it because felines and the divine feminine energy are very much alike. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you said, do I work with Kali Ma ever? Heard? Um, I feel that all goddess energy can work through any woman whenever they need it. Like you have access to any goddess's energy whenever you need it um, because it's all within you. So you can work with whoever you want, but you can have access to all of them. Okay. You said, so the God that everyone talks about is the divine masculine. Um. The first representation of any type of deity was a goddess. If you go back to ancient history, to the beginning of time, the first icon or statue or, or whatever that was ever created was always to a woman. So I do feel like the, um, the God of the Bible or the male God was definitely man-made in order to, you know, uh, create patriarchy. I don't believe in a male God. Okay, I believe that was created by men who wanted power. Okay. 
Um, you're all connected to the divine feminine. Yes. Now, if a male uh, identifies them himself as a god, they all came from goddesses or women or the feminine. So, you know, it really wouldn't matter. But at the same time, you can't, you know, leave the feminine aspect out of a religion that you're going to create to instill patriarchy. It will always backfire. Uh-huh. Do I think celebrities undergo occult studies? I think they may read and do their own research, or maybe they have someone who knows about it who may help them along the way and learn. But um, I definitely know that a lot of them are know this because um, they have to in that industry in order to thrive and also protect themselves. So I do feel like they should know it if they don't. Uh huh. They should, or they should learn it, or they should find someone to help them, you know, learn it. Uh, so, well, I wish everyone in the industry luck who was trying to make it through. I hope they figured out and learn. Um, I hope Doja can't get through what she's getting through because she's obviously doing the correct thing. Uh, I hope, yeah, she's doing it right. I I feel like um, she'll, you know, she'll be fine. <laughs> What's up with women's in eraser in a new patriarchy all over again? There's no women eraser. You can't have the patriarchy without the matriarchy. Remember that. Uh, it's a uh -huh. like you can't have men without women. It won't. It won't ever work out. Mm hmm. You, you would think the divine feminine would return around the age of Pisces. Uh huh. <sighs> I, you know, I have a very strong opinion about the age of Pisces and the age of Aquarius. Um, do we like Pisces is literally the last sign. So how do we enter into the age of Aquarius? <laughs> is it just where they are in the the night sky. I do feel like, I mean, mathematics, pi and Pisces have a lot to do with what's going on. So if you take pi, which is 3.14 numbers that keep going and never repeat to infinity. So basically you taking infinity And you're allowing infinity, which is, you know, the infinity symbol, to, to create yeah, the golden ratio. And the only way to infinity is rebirth. And the divine feminine can only create infinity. Okay. So... I think infinity has a lot to do with the divine feminine, for sure. Pi the age of Pisces had a lot to do with the divine feminine, for sure. And for only a little piece of time did patriarchy rule, not very long. The divine feminine had ruled much, much longer you know what I'm saying? So there was a small, there's a small period of time where the world was ruled by patriarchy. And it's like this little, if you take, if you go all the way back past a, you know, ancient Kemet, you know, you have like all these ancient goddesses and things like that. Even Kemet was matriarchy, matriarchal. Africa was matriarchal. Most tribes were 
like very matriarchal. So you come into the age where, you know, the knowledge got stolen and then um, from Kemet and then things started to become patriarchal, but that's only for this little amount of time. It's not lasting super long. It's only like this, a blip on history. And so once that was, you know, corrected and the divine feminine returns, then it's really, it's just going to, you know, go back to the way it always was. It's not that bad. It's just, you know, a lot of people are thinking it's some type of war between the masculine and the feminine. There's never a war. It's just going to be the feminine, you know, because that's what births the masculine. So, but they're both able to coexist. If everybody stops trying to say one should rule over the other. Okay. You said the divine Pisces is feminine energy, but feminine energy was supposed suppressed during the age of Pisces for a little while, for a little while. Um, because Jesus was repping, Jesus literally was re repping the Pisces energy. Repping, repping, representing the Piscean energy, right? That's why his symbol was the fish, da da da, da. So, um, okay. Also, I wanted to do a video, but I'm going to do it another time, hopefully, about a lot of the artists and people that ripped the divine feminine energy in a time where patriarchy was being pushed. They rebelled against it and they left secret messages all over these churches, all throughout art and history. When they were commissioned to paint um, these masculine deities or the patriarchal version of religion in the heavens, they always found a way to paint secret messages that honored the divine feminine in their work. Why? Because as an artist, as a creative, as someone that has that much genius and insight, they already knew what the divine feminine was. They knew it was, you know, what it was. So they always implemented the divine feminine in their artwork as almost a, a way to rebel against the church. Um, and a lot of these artists, you know, <laughs> they always... Um, left behind what they call breadcrumbs so you could see it later. All right. Mm -hmm. hey. Okay. You said that energy is starting to fade. Um, I don't think that energy ever will fade. <laughs> like if you think about it, I have my own opinion, so I don't want to say it. And I don't want to make a lot of people feel like there's a place in a time where time no longer exists. And if you, if you do go to the age of Aquarius versus staying in a place where time no longer really exists, um, I think that's what we're merging. A lot of people are calling it the shift or the new world or whatever, whatever. But Aquarius is based on a time. The age, which is a time, of Aquarius is based on time. Eternal life is based on energy. So there are, there's a shift. There's a split. And so um, it's up to y'all what y'all want to what y'all want to feel or what y'all want to live in I, i'll explain i'll explain more later but it is the choice okay i mean you have pi c's the symbol of eternity fish eternal life No time, because infinity, 
means there's no time. You got, you got forever, right? And then you have the water bearer, okay? The Aquarius, which is a person pouring water out. Okay, so just think about it. You got to sit with that one for a little while. So which one do you want? Which age would you like to be in? And where are they pouring that water? You know. He says the end of an era or the beginning or the era never has to end. So that's what it is. It's like you have a choice. It's literally your choice. Um, yeah. Time and space is what leads to manifestation without either. There is no need to manifest everything because we are everything essential. Um, that's right. But there's a loophole in that. And I'm, I got to go in a little while. If you manifest throughout time and space, forever, then you're manifesting through infinity, right? So infinity goes on forever, forever and ever and ever and ever and ever. So you can't really call that time because if you don't have an end or beginning of something, you can't really call it time. But if you put an end, like everybody always wants to say, oh, it's the end of the world, it's the end of our age, it's the end of our time, you're putting a limit on it. So if you don't have any limits, you don't live within the, you know, the time, and you're literally able to manifest throughout eternity in different realms, in different, whenever you want, like a cat, you see? So in, in different dimensions and we don't go by, you know, time because like, and time was also very different during the matriarchy versus the patriarchy. See, they changed the lunar time to the solar time, which is solar is masculine, lunar is more feminine. So they even changed time on you and gave you their own definition of time. There were used to be 13 months because women have 13 periods, okay? 13 menstrual cycles. They changed it to 12 and dismissed the whole um, time because the first indicator of time was the female menstrual cycle. Every, every month it came. So people's like, okay, every time the moon is in this phase, the women have this cycle. So the women are definitely um, the time keepers, and they're associated with the moon. So um, they changed it to the masculine because it was always the lunar month. So that's why um, the calendar was changed by men. So we literally have 13 months because there's 13 periods a year. All right. That's why months are measured in 20 to 30, 28 to 30 days. Yeah. So I don't know. Um, and a lot of times it, you'll, you'll figure it out. I think the age of Aquarius versus the age of Pisces is where the shift occurs. That's why it's happening right now. So that's why there's a purge or that's why some people are able to do what they want and some people are, you know, finding it very hard to thrive because if you're pouring out all the water and going into an age of Aquarius, which is an air sign, you're literally pouring out, you know, a frequency of, of water where you can charge the particles, where you can command it, where you can create within it. You know, it's the primordial source of life on any planet. But if it's being poured out, then there's only wind, there's only air, there's only spirit, you know? So that to me represents 
you can either be reincarnated, being poured out. You can be, um, you can you can be being um, reassigned or shifted to another frequency. But you know, in the age of Pisces, that is an eternal age, which you choose to stay. Or if you believe in an end, then you move forward into into the end time. You know what I'm saying? So it is all mental. Air is mental. So if you believe there's an end, then you'll follow, follow the man with the jug of water into the next house. I think that's what Jesus was saying when he was telling his disciples, follow the man with the, uh, the jug into the next house that represents the Aquarian age, the Aquarian shift. But why didn't Jesus follow that? Why did he go ahead and eternalize and iconize himself? Why did he come back? Why did he resurrect? You know what I mean? So to me, it's a choice. He told his apostles or his disciples to go ahead and follow that way, but he went a totally different way and was resurrected and lived eternal life. Okay. So, and remember his mom was leaving Egypt where, you know, they worshiped cats. Um, but at the same time, You know, it is what it is. The divine know where they thrive and where they can eternally live. The people that have um, a beginning and an end and they live within time, there's always an end or a beginning. So you gotta think about it like that. That's the reason why they make pie and Pisces and the number that represents eternity so that you can figure it out. Some people won't move into the age of Aquarius. They will stay in the age of Pisces. Some people will move into the age of Aquarius and that's an air sign. And air carries the frequencies, the plasma, the energy. Water carries life and they're pouring it out. Pour it up, pour it up, watch it all fall out. And sing by Pisces, Rihanna. Pour it up, pour it up. That's how we ball out. So when you ball out, You ball out. You don't get reborn. You get balled out. You know what I'm saying? So there's a reason why they outlawed abortion at this time. So people don't get balled out. The end of the age of Pisces, you either are reborn through the woman, or you balled out through the man. <laughs> and, you know, you want to be, you want to be uh, eternalized. A lot of people aren't choosing to have children. A lot of people aren't, re are, aren't reproducing or procreating. And so therefore you're, you know, if you don't have anybody in your family, that's also reproducing, you know, your bloodline definitely will end. And you will definitely not be able to, you know, live eternally through your own DNA um, and through multiple dimensions if it ends. So that's another reason why they outlawed abortion and why they had, you know, um, a lot of shifting and 
things this year. So just think about it like that. All right, y'all, I got to go. I'll see y'all on the next one. Sprinkle, sprinkle. I'll see y'all later. Bye.